In this video, I will provide you with an overview of key concepts and best practices pertaining to assembly monitoring, security and safety, with a particular emphasis on duty of care, security risk management, and preparation and planning. This will help you respond to unanticipated security situations when monitoring assemblies. First, let's provide you with a general understanding of terms such as security, safety, security risk management, and duty of care, which are relevant for assembly monitoring activities. Each assembly monitor bears responsibility when it comes to safety and security. Let me start with a quote. Security is always seen as too much until the day it is not enough. We often hear terms security and safety. So what indeed is the difference between security and safety? Security refers to risk of harm resulting from intentional, deliberate acts such as public disorder, crimes, terrorism, etc. Safety, on the other hand, refers to risk of harm resulting from unintentional acts such as accidents, natural disasters, pandemics, etc. Security Risk Management, SRM, is about mitigating security risk. Applying security risk management does not provide any guarantees that incident will not happen. However, if an incident indeed happens, there might be lower impact due to adequately adopted security mitigating measures. Security and safety are individual responsibility of every person involved in assembly monitoring. Security mitigating measures are about procedures, processes or equipment. They are about adopting to specific contexts of the situation that might emerge during monitoring and applying situational judgment on what the best response by monitors would be in terms of safety and security. This video offers general guidance and does not cover all situations that might occur in the field. When monitoring an assembly, you should exert due diligence in taking all reasonable steps to implement security measures to prevent reasonable foreseeable harm to you and your team of monitors. We will now explore the key security and safety considerations that must be taken into account when planning for an assembly monitoring deployment. Understanding key considerations will help you to deploy prepared for contingency and in the case if a situation on the ground deteriorates, you will be better prepared to respond accordingly. Situational awareness is something that assembly monitors must exercise at all times. While the vast majority of assembly starts peacefully, there is always a possibility that an assembly might turn violent, clashes between assembly participants and the police or between different groups can happen at any time. When taking part in an assembly monitoring activity, you should generally be aware of your whereabouts, who is around you, what is taking place in your proximity, and what actions you should take if the situation starts to deteriorate. Try to keep yourself out of harm's way. As an assembly monitor, you should think of yourself as a referee on the playing field. The referee must be close enough to observe the game directly, but must also take every precaution to avoid getting mixed up in the action. Here are the key security and safety considerations that every assembly monitor should keep in mind in preparation of and during the monitoring exercise. A. Physical fitness. Physical fitness is an important consideration in case the situation suddenly deteriorates or it even turns violent. An assembly monitor whose mobility is limited should weigh the risks in advance. B. Mapping of the exit routes. Being continuously mindful of one's location is essential. It means finding a vantage point that allows for observation of both protesters and police or other authorities without ending up between them. Try to find out beforehand how such events have, in the same location or venue, played out in the past. Always map out exit routes in the advance, rehearse a possible exit with your team, and always work in agreed teams when covering any potential violent situation. In case of disruption to public order or other potential dangerous situations, use these exit routes and head towards a predetermined meeting point, which is essential if some monitors get separated from other members of the monitoring team and for meeting up at the end of the event. C. Make the teams. 
do not observe on your own. At least two assembly monitors should team up and be together at all times. Unless it happens due to exceptional circumstances, do not break away from your team. If planned properly, there should be a pre-agreed meeting point in case team members get separated. D. Clothing. Clothing should be chosen thoughtfully, including consideration of whether it would be better to stand out, example using visible identifications, or blend in. In principle, monitoring should be carried out in a visible and transparent manner, so we can be clearly identifiable as monitors by both the law enforcement and assembly participants. However, due to security and safety reasons, such as perceived hostility towards monitors from the crowd, we can sometimes also opt to undertake monitoring in a more discreet manner. Clothes should be loose fitting and made of natural fabrics, as synthetic materials can catch fire and burn more quickly. Good shoes with appropriate support and flexible non-slip soles are also essential. Assembly monitors should avoid wearing clothing such as colored bandanas or blue windbreakers, as they might make you look like a protester or a law enforcement agent. As will be discussed in the video on planning a monitoring mission, assembly monitors should carry the least amount of baggage and only pack the minimum personal equipment required to survive through an assembly monitoring exercise, such as spare water. In addition, assembly monitors should make sure to keep communication channels open with the team throughout the event and have different means of communications at their disposal, as sometimes mobile phone networks can be unreliable and become overloaded in the presence of large crowds. Depending on their needs, the monitoring teams can use walkie-talkies or they can rely on site to keep in touch with the teams. In addition, monitoring teams can set up a group chats on Signal or some other secured messaging systems during the monitoring exercise. Assembly monitors should keep in mind that in case mobile phone networks are down, communications via various apps will only be possible if there is Wi-Fi network. If you are being arrested during an assembly, try to remain calm. Make every effort to maintain a professional demeanor while you explain that you are an independent assembly monitor observing the assembly. If the authorities decide to proceed with the arrest, comply with orders and wait for an opportunity to make your case calmly to a supervising authority. If possible, make sure to inform your team leader about your detention. Whatever sympathies you might have for any actors on the ground, keep in mind the core principles of assembly monitoring. Independence, neutrality, objectivity. What is always important is that an assembly monitor acts on the ground as an observer rather than a participant. We will now focus on the various stages of deployment. Before the monitoring activity, during the monitoring activity while on the ground, when troubles erupt, and during the post-deployment briefing. Each stage of monitoring project requires careful planning, preparation and implementation to ensure that set objectives are met while taking the safety and security of assembly monitors into consideration. Security risk management for assembly monitoring deployments is an ongoing process that starts before deployment, applies during deployment and stops only once assembly monitors conclude their activities and return to their headquarters. Assembly monitors should note that security mitigating measures may vary depending on circumstances and shall be defined in the assembly's specific security risk assessment. Here are some practical steps to consider before, during and after deployment. Conduct a pre-deployment briefing where all details regarding the assembly monitoring exercise will be clarified to the monitors. Make sure that all monitors know who is in charge, namely who is the monitoring coordinator on the ground. Survey the location of the demonstration and planned routes. If possible, ensure that you study the assembly route map prior to the assembly. Agree on a meeting point in case you lose your team and agree on a safe place where you can retreat if situation becomes too dangerous.
Keep yourself in good physical and mental condition and get adequate rest before the day of monitoring. Never wear anything that might raise doubts about your role, such as military-style clothing, bandanas or blue windbreakers. If provoked, keep calm. Keep the hostile person in view at all times. Be mindful of your surrounding and show self-confidence. It is a good practice to alert the authorities about your plan to cover the assembly. You could try to obtain the mobile number of the officer in charge on the site of authorities. The more senior, the better. Take protective gear. This can include towel, goggles and gas mask. Your decision regarding this might depend on the weapons the police force in the place you are monitoring use for crowd control. In case tear gas is used, carry a bandana and soak it in water. Cover your mouth and nose with it. Try to use goggles to protect your eyes. Try not to wear contact lenses as tear gas will get under the lenses. Bring eye drops and spare glasses. Wear comfortable shoes that you can run in. Wear natural fabrics which might be less flammable than synthetic fabrics. Prepare a grab bag with supplies to last a day. That can include a lightweight rain gear, energy bars and water. Spare batteries for electronic equipment and protective equipment. Pack an individual first aid kit and know how to use it. Carry a photocopy of your passport and or national ID. Carry your monitor's identity card and an emergency pocket contact list with important telephone numbers. Set your mobile phone to speed dial with an emergency number preset. Make sure you have the number of all your co-monitors. Know your blood group and keep a note of it among your ID papers. Keep good situational awareness. Be alert and suspicious of anything unusual that might mean danger and make sure to adapt and take initiative to react to changing circumstances accordingly. Methodically and rigorously observe safety rules and procedures as agreed beforehand and as clarified in your security risk assessment and security plan. Maintain good communication at all times with the other monitors. Always report where you are and what you are going to do. Whenever possible, discuss your intention with your teammates. Do not separate yourself from the team unless the situation demands it. While in the crowd, look for escape routes and ensure you know the landmarks to head for if you become disoriented. Try to stay on the edge of the crowd and do not get caught on the line between police and protesters. Crowds have life of their own. Be constantly aware of the mood and attitude. Alert your teammates if the mood starts to change and start to think about the plan. If you plan to change direction, seek advice from people who have just come from the direction you are heading towards. Avoid horses, they bite and kick. Try to stay upwind from tear gas. Try to avoid getting in line of fire of water cannons, as you can get hurt. The water can have dying need for security forces to be able to identify protesters afterwards. Avoid being caught between clashing groups or ending up in the middle of any crowd. People who throw missiles usually do it from the middle of the mass of protesters, where they can blend back into the crowd. Walk along the sides of the protesters. It will be as well easier to reach escape routes if needed. If the police detain you, try to ask them to call the person in charge on the side of the authorities if you have their number. Try to speak to a senior officer as this will have more impact. Try to avoid a crowd in which violence erupts and move away before it's too late. After every assembly monitoring exercise, it is of utmost importance to organize a debriefing session with your co-monitors and your monitoring coordinator. A security debriefing should take place regardless of whether the assembly turned violent or not. Monitors deployed for the monitoring exercise should also share their observations concerns and ideas on how to do better in the future. Existing standard operating procedures and contingency plans should be reviewed and amended accordingly based on lessons learned. Finally, let's talk about the use of pepper spray and tear gas during assemblies. These chemical agents have become increasingly prevalent in law enforcement riot control and self-defense scenarios. Tear gas and pepper spray are non-lethal weapons that are designed to incapacitate 
and deter individuals through the use of chemical irritants. The first thing to remember regarding exposure to these chemicals is that it is not the worst thing that could happen to you. The hype and fear surrounding them is enormous, but in reality, if you are careful, you should recover with little problem. Tear gas and pepper spray are chemical compounds that are used by law enforcement to disperse crowds and subdue individuals. They are irritants, they are mixed with solvent and delivered through the use of propellants. Tear gas and pepper spray can be sprayed from small handheld dispensers or large fire extinguisher sized tanks. Tear gas is most commonly deployed via canisters, which are fired into crowds, sometimes directly at people. When monitoring an assembly, do not pick up canisters you see lying on the ground. Both tear gas and pepper spray are skin irritants causing burning pain and excess drainage from eyes, nose, mouth and breathing passages. Pepper spray is more popular with authorities as an agent of control because of its immediate pain causing qualities. It is harder to remove from the skin and has the capacity to cause first degree burns. If you are exposed to either you might experience stinging and burning in your eyes, nose, mouth and skin. Excessive tearing, causing your vision to blur. Runny nose, increased salivation, coughing and difficulty breathing, disorientation, confusion and sometimes panic. Thankfully, the effects are temporary. Discomfort from tear gas usually disappears after 5 to 30 minutes, while the worst pepper spray discomfort may take 20 minutes to 2 hours to subside. The effects of both diminish sooner with treatment. Because pepper spray penetrates to the nerve endings, its effects might last for hours after removal from the skin. There are many myths about treatment and prevention. Much of this information is potentially dangerous. Some of it, if applied, could greatly increase or prolong a person's reaction to exposure or at the very least provide a false sense of security. For most healthy people, the effects of tear gas and pepper spray are temporary. However, for some people, the effects can be long-lasting and life-threatening. People with conditions should be aware of these risks and may want to try to avoid exposure. People with respiratory diseases, such as asthma, risk aggravation or permanent damage if exposed. Vulnerable people, such as elderly and the immune-compromised risk intensified and possibly life-threatening response. Anyone with chronic health conditions or those on medications that weaken the immune system, such as chemotherapy, lupus, radiation, risk worsening of illness, intensified response and possible delayed recovery. Pregnant women might be at increased risk of spontaneous abortion or birth defects. Nursing mothers risk passing toxins on their infants. People with skin conditions such as severe acne, psoriasis or eczema or eye conditions may risk an intensified response. Finally, people wearing contact lenses may experience increased eye irritation and damage due to chemicals being trapped under the lenses. Please be aware that in intense situations, police behavior can be unpredictable and avoidance is not always possible. This video provided you with an overview of key concepts and best practices pertaining to assembly monitoring security and safety, with a particular emphasis on duty of care, security risk management and preparation and planning. This will help you respond to unexpected security situations on the ground. The duty of care requires paying due consideration and making a commitment to facilitate security and safety of assembly monitors. It involves identifying and mitigating security risks as well as providing appropriate training and resources to assembly monitors. Principles of security risk management involve following a structured approach to identifying and addressing security risks. A security risk assessment and the implementation of appropriate security mitigation measures to address the identified security risks will help you to respond in a case a situation deteriorates on the ground. Finally, preparing and planning for a monitoring exercise is essential. By developing an effective incident response plan 
ensuring that assembly monitors are properly trained and equipped and conducting pre-deployment briefing, you will be better prepared to respond to unexpected security situations and emergencies. Thank you.